What's up everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. Today we have Luffy doing Red Hawk in his 1-0 costume. So I am on landscape orientation paper. Use a pencil and eraser for these and hit pause if I go too fast for you. Use these tutorials any way you want. You know, you can skip ahead if you like doing uh, like the head shape first or the hair first. I just start with the eyes. But if you want to skip forward and skip back and jump around, you know, pause stuff, all that kind of thing. So use these tutorials in your way. There's no rules. If anyone tells you there's rules in art, they're either misinformed or lying. <laughs> so no rules, let's go. Um, I'm on, yeah, I said that already. Anyway, boom, center point to my page here, come over and we're gonna start with his eyes, his eyebrows more specifically. So pretty simple. So we just do like a tick for the eyebrow, right? Just like that. And then his eye, so it's round, kind of Luffy eyes. So kind of starts here and then imagine it goes under his eyebrow and then it comes out the other side. Like that, right? So you're looking for this circular sort of shape. But because he's frowning, some of it's hidden underneath, right? And then the bottom, bottom of the eye, just here. And his iris and pupil. So Luffy's eyes, depending on what image you're drawing from, can be grey and they can be black. So they're black in my picture, so I'll just make them black. But you could do that grey if you wanted. And then we'll go over and do the other eye. So we're in three-quarter pose, right? So that means some of this part of his body and face is smaller, turned away from us, than the, it's smaller than this side because it's turned away bit of perspective okay so just over here the eyebrow ticks up again right like so it's probably just like a little bit smaller than the other one right and then this eye same sort of thing just a little bit smaller not too much smaller but you know it's just like a little bit smaller because you, so you give that op optical illusion that this side of his face is turned away from us by making things smaller, okay? It's further away. And his pupil. Like so. So a slight difference in size, okay? So on my page, my size page, that's two centimeters. And then there, it's like 1.7, 1.6. So, you know, a little bit smaller. That's what we're going for. You don't have to measure, I was just showing for example, that's all. And then we got like some frown lines just in here. Frown line on his brow. Maybe like coming up here as well. So then his nose, so coming down from the eyebrow on this side, right? Because his face is turned that way. So it comes down, around for the top of his nose, just there. And then his nostril, just a dot. So we can see his teeth, so big one piece sort of mouth. So we just do a line coming across here. So it looks like he's got a real small mouth at the minute. So we'll just bring it, carve it down this side. This side's bigger now, All right? So remember, this is the big side. And then we go it down this way. And on the skinny side, you just bring it down here. All right, like that. And then it's going to curve underneath. Like so. And then we add teeth inside. So you could draw in every tooth if you wanted, but this is like just a easier way. So in terms of the shape for his face, we can only see one side of his jaw and then one side of his cheek, right? So the side of his head comes down here and then it comes out for the jaw because we're in three quarter pose, right? So say chin. So if we added his chin, right? It's kind of a, like a round sort of chin, right? Doesn't, it's not like a pointy chin or anything. So it like comes around here. And this will go up for his jaw on this side, up to here. 
right so we can just see the jaw on this side and then it goes up the side of his face here so we're not the same on both sides now see that so the center line of his face comes down here and we're real skinny on this side so you can fit like this side of his face will go across here twice right so that's why it's called three quarter pose because you can only see three quarters of the whole face this side quarter of it is missing so say like this width goes across here twice about the width of my finger anyway on my size paper and then we go one two so it goes across two definitely twice anyway to his nose one two at least and then we bring up the rest of his face up there and then on this side of his head, right, we start his hair. So he's got um, some sideburns, if I could just zoom in. Yeah, so we got like a sideburn here, right? And this becomes his ear. So it like comes up around like that. And then down for his earlobe into his jaw. here and then you can do bones and ligaments on the inside like so get this like that can't see much of his ear on the other side so we'll just keep doing the hair right so we go up this way and then we meet like the lines for his fringe Spiking down like that, so he just has standard sort of hair spikes. Like so and then when we get to this point we sort of go the other direction. So we just do one comes down here. And then his other side burn just on the side of his face. There. And then we have one that kind of sticks out here. And then we can see a little bit of his ear just in here. Like a tiny little bit, just like that. And the rest of his head and his hair spikes go all the way around to the back of his neck and his ear back here. Okay, So we just keep going. Remember, hair moves, goes in different directions. So you don't need to be exactly like mine. It just goes around like so. down the other side. They get kind of smaller as we go down towards the back of his neck. Like so. So he has a top knot, so he's got that Japanese, sort of classic Japanese theme in his Wano costume. So the land of Wano. So it's like, it's got this oval, ellipse kind of shape there on the top and then this will go down into his hair back here and then down back this way and then we meet these bands or sort of ties or something in the middle and then this goes back to there so coming out here we have this hand that's like pushing out you know he's doing this sort of pose the red hawk sort of pose he's a, when he's in gear two so this hand sticks out and it's going across his body this way right so say like here this is like his shoulder and we can see his back 
coming down this way. But we'll just draw the shoulder and the arm first. So shoulder that way. And then we have a bump kind of for his bicep. Coming down here. So when you could have like a shoulder line there and another deltoid sort of muscle going that way. Right, so usually you have three muscles for deltoids just to show where his arm is. And then, so forearm, sort of will go, boom, there. Right, so you've like bump for the bicep then a bump for the forearm. And this kind of goes out kind of straighter then here to his wrist. All right. And before we draw the hand, we'll just do the other side of the wrist and the forearm back here. So it goes out like so. This is the skinny part, the wrist, and then the forearm sort of bulges out there. Yeah, it's kind of wider up here than here. And then his elbow, just in there. And then we got like his tricep, which will go up like just underneath this sort of deltoid muscle, say, in there. Right, so the tricep will like carve down around and go into his elbow. Just there. And you could have a line that separates the anatomy, like so. Right, so then this hand that sticks up here, it's just sticking out flat, right? So, I guess, so the bottom of a hand is like this W sort of shape, okay? So we'll do that first, so it kind of bumps up. And when your hand is sticking out, this W shape becomes the thumb out here, and then you have this sort of block of fingers above, right? So your thumb will stick out here. And then this will go around. Then another sort of bump there. Could have some skin lines and forward lines and things, right? So then, palm of his hand bumps up twice that way. And then the side of his hand on this side goes up about here. And then we got like his lifeline, you know, all those lines that people have in their hand. If you ever go for a palm reading, you have your lifeline and your money line and all that stuff on his hand, all these wrinkles and stuff. So then each finger comes up, they're all close together and we'll start with the little finger on this side. So it's kind of just bumping kind of line up here. It can be straight, slightly maybe curved a little bit. Then we'll bring it around. down and usually on finger you have like three segments one two three with sort of skin lines in between right like that maybe something on the bottom okay and then the next finger so we'll go say one there two three And then we go again. Now, so your little finger, ring finger, middle finger. So the, like on my hand anyway. So yeah, I guess it can be different on certain people, but the middle finger is the tallest one. See the way. So we'll just make this a little bit taller. And then we go down. One, two, three segments. Then around there. And then index finger. One, two, three. Like so. 
So we can see his chest muscle just coming down here. Goes in behind his forearm, like so. And then the center line for his chest. Sort of come out here, say. And go up around to there. This is the other chest muscle that goes that way. And then the collarbone just goes in underneath his chin, sort of here, like his other chest muscle there. And so we have the rope for his hat, right? So say like a knot or something, just there. And we have like, lines like so and then it goes up underneath his chin there and then we'll go around this way like so and then we could have some neck muscle lines you know some anatomy just here something else going here Maybe just underneath the rope, maybe something there. Like so. And we got his scar. Just like a zigzag sort of line. X, you know, coming down his chest. Texture lines on it. And then his abdominal area. Starting here, right? So his torso is sort of leaning, so his back sort of leaning back this way. Okay, so, so we'll go curve it around, right? Kind of goes in here, and then we can see like his hips. There, okay. And then his waist is kind of, so he's got, so it like wraps around here. Okay, so like say, it goes like this way. Down off the bottom of my page, it's his kimono sort of tied around his waist here. And then it'll come out this way. And we'll go. Up underneath his arm, sort of there. And kind of, there's more fold lines and stuff over here, but we gotta draw his abs in first and stuff. So his scar, right? His other scar that comes down his body here. And you'll have like texture lines and things on that, like so. And then we have the center, so the center line for his body, right? So we. So it bumps down like this because he's got like strong amp muscles and then curves here and then on the sides like so and then we can see like bottom of his chest maybe or ribs here maybe some oblique rib lines and things there and the abs going the other way, this side. Right, so we'll finish just the rest of the bottom of his clothing, right? So it comes out, just goes off my page. And then like something here. All these sort of folding lines, right? Up and around here, go behind his hand. Another fold coming out this way. Fold kind of here, another one 
here. And then like his knee or something coming out off my page goes that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then his hat. Can't forget his hat. And then some, we can see some of his sword and his other hand. So the hat comes out from just at the top of this. Big line like so. And then the inside of it. The part that kind of sits on his head. Just there. Real big hat. It's real big in this. Is it always that big? It's real big in this picture. Yeah. And then there. There. Just adding these texture lines now. Um, just to make it look that it's made of straw. And then the part, the round part on top. And then the red fabric here. And then there's like these texture lines. Right, so then this sword. You could use a ruler if you wanted to get this line in. Maybe I will. So it goes like this way. Can be a bumpy line because it's got like fabric all over it and things. So, you know, don't worry if it's not like 100% straight and stuff. And it has a sort of a golden cap or something up here. So it's got like a bumpy thing coming around like that right so and then the end I think it's slightly maybe curves right and then the top down around like that there's like some details or something on it. I'm not sure what it is. So I'll just kind of make it up. Like that, and then we got like lines. This one has like X's on it. So we got like an X. stuff just extra sort of lines going down like that thicken up the edge maybe a little bit all right so then we just need his hand that's sort of stretched back this way a little bit and um, with some flame around it right so 
real rubbery sort of so it goes this way goes up bends this way and it's real small at the top because You know, it's kind of stretched out far, so the other side will go here. Nice. And then at the top, we got like four knuckles. So one, two, three, and then the fourth curves around to the index finger there. So this one comes down a bit further. We'll just add those knuckles there. And then his thumb sort of clenched here. Back in to there. And then like his wrist will come down. Join that. Like so, roughly speaking. Could have like a wrist bone or something here. And then it's all flame. Right, so there's flames like here, some up here, and around this hand. So it's like semi-colored, transparent, right? So you, you'd color over it, sort of orange and stuff, right? So, so it's just like a big fireball, sort of just here. You know, with various sort of spikes and things. Just going up around this. It's all colored orange and red and stuff on the inside. So, so it'd be like orange on the outside and so yellow inside here, right? And then another one sort of around this part of his hand. So go like up here. Coming out from here. So say this would be like spiky. you get the, kind of the feel for what fire sort of looks like I mean it's different in all animes but you get a kind of feel for it and then you just you add these sort of blobs and spikes then randomly sort of So, and then orange and yellow and maybe white. So different shades of white and yellow and stuff on the inside. You know, and you could have random sort of flames sort of here around them. As much as you want, really. Fill the space. Like that. And as much of this sort of sparks and flame and all that yellow and stuff around them. So, but I think I'll leave it there. That's how to draw Luffy, Red Hawk. Hope it's helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.